honestly can't end the year off without another book haul, can we? So here we go. Hello friends, I'm Rosa, welcome to the channel. So today I am doing the last book haul of the year. We're gonna be sitting here for a while because I got 44 books to tell you guys about, but also a little bit extra, which really took me by surprise. I'm gonna try not to make this bit too long because 44 books, we have a lot to go through. But as per usual, you can find chapters down here in the timeline. So if you prefer a genre over another one, such as adult sci-fi over YA fantasy, you can click down here. I usually start out with young and old fantasy, but today I'm actually gonna start out with books sent by you, which might I just add, the heck? <laughs> but also you can find links in the description to all the books as well, at least if I can fit them in there because it's 44 books. So might actually be too many characters for the description box, but I'm gonna do my best. So just a little quick note on this. I have a friend in Canada and her and I have sent each other Christmas gifts for the past like three years or something. We tried sending it from like her from Canada to Denmark and me from Denmark to Canada but it took like one and a half months for my present to her to arrive so we do it through Amazon now. And so we did that I got a tracking link on the 30th, so the 30th of November, that was her package that was typed into our tracking system. And then I got another one on the 1st and I was, <laughs> I started spamming my friend because I was like, did you buy more? Was, was your present for me split up? And neither her or myself could figure it out. There was just suddenly a mystery package in my tracking app. It was very confusing is my point. A couple of days later, another one showed up and I'm like, what is going on here? <laughs> anyway. So the package arrived, I looked at it, clearly it was books. I had to check if maybe it was something that she'd sent me because her and I have separate wish lists for each other so I'd be able to see if it was something from that wish list. And it wasn't, so I first took out a quart of frost and starlight and I was like, what in the world is going on here? <laughs> and then I looked down into the, into the package, the box, and also pulled out a Court of Mist and Fury, <laughs> and I squealed in my apartment. Like, I squealed. I'm telling you this because I really wanted to, after opening it, I kind of regretted not doing it on cam. I was so happy, so thank you to Stella for sending me these. I love them. This is like, hands down, one of my top three favorite books. Thank you so much. Like, I cannot even, thank you. <laughs> Made me so, so happy. And then I sat there and looked at them afterwards, just like, what are they doing in my apartment? <laughs> so thank you so much, Stella. I appreciate this so so much thank you i've been wanting them for like ages <laughs> anyway but and then i got another one that arrived today i'm i don't know what it is so i'm gonna open this here it's very heavy though what is it <laughs> what i can't what is going on oh it's so surreal i don't even stella oh it was split up so here's a message okay and then oh <gasps> Thor Olympus? Oh, it's so pretty. I did not know they'd be so pretty in person. Wow. Okay. Stella, your first message wasn't in the first box that came with this one. Thank you so, so much. I'm so happy that you love Equitar, because I do too. I think it's amazing. I'm planning on rereading them for the new year, and I'll be reading these, of course. I just... You know, I gotta get Echo War as well, but I'll find it. <laughs> Thank you so, so much. I That is so insanely generous of you. Thank you. This is adorable, by the way. Absolutely adorable, but thank you, Stella. I don't really know how to say thank you enough, but thank you very much. Okay, but as for Echotar, shall we just quickly go through it? In the series, we follow Feyre, who is a human living in like a world where the Fae kind of take up a lot of space. They're also dangerous, and Feyre is living in a very small cottage with her family. So she lives there with her disabled father and also her two older sisters. And for some reason, they can't can't like go out to get food and stuff. Her and her family are very poor so she goes out in the forest quite often to hunt and one day she ends up coming across a wolf that she can clearly see is a fae and actually shoots it. So the next day a very powerful fae shows up at her doorstep and is like you took one of our lives I'm gonna take you with me back to our realm or their part of the world basically as a trade. So she ends up in one of the courts the spring court where she has to make a new life for herself and in the process also gets to know this fate that 
took her to the spring court and finds out that there's a lot going on here such as there's a curse that she's now also gonna try to work on solving and lifting and yes. <laughs> well that's just the first one. This series is so much more than that. Like I feel like the first one is basically, it feels like a whole different world you enter in the second one and the second book is so amazing. <laughs> Hands down one of my top three favorite books. I'm gonna have to find spots for these now. I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. <laughs> so Stella also sent me Lore Olympus by Rachel Smith or Smith. There's a Y. I'm confused. But anyway, and this is actually originally a webtoon, but has now been released as volumes. So this is the first one. And it's essentially a fun and very colorful, a little bit modern day retelling of Hades and Persephone, where we follow Persephone and her basically being introduced to the way the gods live in this world and also how she's introduced to Hades as well. So I've heard many lovely things about this. This is so pretty in person. Like I don't know, it's so stunning. <laughs> so I'm gonna leave those up here for a little bit. Thank you again, Stella. I appreciate it so, so much. But we gotta get started with young adult fantasy books. So first we have the third in the Dreamer trilogy, which is Grey Warren by Maggie Steve Fader. Can't really say much about this, to be honest, other than it's the third one in a trilogy and it's like a spin-off of, of the Raven Boys. Alcrate sent me this and I am showing it off in another video that I have released here on the channel. So I will link it up in one of the corners if you want to check it out, where I basically show off all of the young adult special editions that I have, but can't really say much about the story, <laughs> to be honest. Then I got another special edition, which is The Whispering Dark by Kelly Andrew. So this book is about a deaf student who ends up at a school where she finally feels like she has the opportunity to actually prove herself. At this school, they train students to travel between parallel... Is it parallel universes or parallel worlds? Parallel worlds. Okay, and so that's what she's there to learn. At the school, there is also a guy who she at all costs has to avoid and likewise from his side. But unfortunately, the two of them find themselves in a bit of a situation because a student turns up dead one day and so the two have to work together to solve what happened to the student and also various other things. <laughs> So think dark academia, mystery vibes, maybe a touch of horror. I'm kind of hoping there'll be a touch of horror, but we will see. Then I got one that I just received today, and that is The Ones We Burn by Rebecca Mix. This is the fairy loot edition, which I honestly don't really want to talk about. <laughs> if you want to check out the unboxing, I'll link it up in one of the corners. But in this one, we follow a witch who has been taught one thing, and then she's sent off one day to marry the prince, but also kill him. As it turns out, when she gets there the prince is actually really nice and it's the sister she has to worry about and I feel like there might also be a little bit of a love story between the two but one day while our lead girl is at the palace witches start to die from this like magical plague that is happening and so she enters a deal with the princess she will help the princess find a cure and then the princess will help her our lead girl the witch control her magic because her magic is very powerful and very dangerous. And so one thing leads to another, questions are being asked, she starts to question her own loyalty as well, and that is the ones we burn. I just have issues with this edition of the book. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> then next up we have Saint by Adrienne Young, which if you have read Fable and Namesake, this takes place in the same universe, but before Fable. I can't remember who Saint is, but I'm excited to find out. <laughs> Honestly, I don't really know much about this book other than we follow Saint and I'm incredibly frustrated that I cannot remember his story at all, but we follow Saint and also Is Isolde. Isolde? Not sure how to pronounce that. <laughs> and everything they kind of go through. So it's something that has been talked about in Fable and now Adrian Young has actually written it out as a book. So I'm excited because that universe was great. I really liked Fable as well. So I basically, no hesitation, ordered it, pre-ordered it, so. <laughs> then we have The Beautiful by Renee Audier, which takes place in 1870s New Orleans, where we follow a young girl who's kind of been thrown into the life of like, you know, parties and stuff in New Orleans. She also has an eye for a guy who's like the leader of a certain group, but one day a girl, the second one actually in a string of murders, is found dead in his own lair. And so she starts to question, very much understandable by the way, maybe she should stay away from this guy, but then a third girl shows up dead and suddenly our girl finds herself in the middle of a very old feud between these two different groups who I think are vampires. <laughs> 
I'm pretty sure they're vampires. And that is what the beautiful is about. I bought this used. It's the first one in a quartet. And I was really in the mood for something vampire. So I think this will help me with that. My little elves are in the way. I also bought Tales from the Shadow Hunter Academy used. So this takes place in the Shadow Hunter universe. I think we follow Simon, who is technically, I can't say because that's a spoiler. <laughs> anyway, we follow him as he trains and all different kinds of stuff that he goes through while trading with the Shadow Hunters. I'm a little bit careful going into this one for the sole reason that Simon is not one of my favorite characters. He's probably my least favorite character in the Shadow Hunter universe, but I've heard good things about this. So so I'll be looking forward to reading this at some point. Also has not been read by the way. I love when I find used books that are technically not used. Like that's great, awesome, you know? Then I also have Cursed by Marissa Mayer. This is the sequel to Gilded, which came out last year in this one, or in the first one we follow. I had her name and then I lost it. Oh gosh, that's really frustrating. Serilda. Her name is Cyrilda, who is a very good storyteller, but so good that one day she tells a story about her being able to spin straw into gold and the Earl King, who is basically the king of the undead, hears about it and decides to kidnap her and take her back to his palace or castle. And so she finds herself in a little bit of trouble because she can't get out, she can't flee. So she gets the help of a guy called Guild, who is very mysterious, to solve various issues that she's having and also to help her basically flee the castle. And it's a bit of an impossible situation that they're in, but that is Gilded. Didn't really fully love the first one, but I'm willing to give the sequel a chance because I didn't hate it either. It just wasn't the best YA book that I've read. I hope if I put it over there, it won't fall down, but we'll see. Next up, I bought this kind of on a whim, but A Deadly Education by Naomi Novik. What I know about this book is that we follow students who are at this school, I think it's called the Scholomance. Listen, one of the Scholomance, I'm gonna assume that's a confirmation, which is a school where they're learning about magic, but also the school is kind of trying to kill you in the process as well. And that sounds very interesting. So I'm intrigued. I think this will be like a good fall read or something, but we'll see if I remember it next fall because I missed it this time. And then I got The Ravenous Dark by A.M. Strickland, which is about a girl who lives in, I think it's a world where magic is actually non necessarily forbidden but those with magic end up at this place and she has magic but she's kept it a secret because she doesn't want to end up at this place. The people with magic are assigned to undead spirits who will basically keep an eye on them and are also able to control them. And so while our girl has been trying to keep her magic a secret for a long time, one day something happens and she exposes herself, being able to do magic, and ends up at this place anyway. And there she both meets the undead spirit that she's assigned to and also a girl and so she has to kind of figure out her place in this place and also there might be some feelings for both the undead spirit that she's bound to but also this girl and some secrets are being brought to light and so it turns out that our little group will have to start basically a rebellion in both the mortal and the underworld and that is all I think I know about this book. Oh also that it is polyamorous the relationship in this I'm pretty sure at least as far as I remember and um, it's a little bit on the darker side as well. I got two more YA books. I don't actually fully know what this is about now that I think about it but I also bought Stepsister by Jennifer Donnelly. I just read that people thought it was good and I think it is a Cinderella retelling because there's a glass slipper and it's called stepsister. Oh yeah, it is a retelling, but it's from the stepsister's point of view. So one of her stepsisters that's not like as pretty as Cinderella and maybe a little bit on the mean side, but she learned it from her mother and okay. Not that I like the two steps or stepsisters in Cinderella, but it's from her point of view, so I'm excited. On the bag it says, Cinderella had her happy ever after, but what about her stepsisters? This is stepsister Isabel's story. Isabel is brave, strong-willed, but not beautiful. And she has bloody feet from trying to fit into the glass slipper. I wonder which one of them that is. Is it the one who cut off her toes? Anyway. But now Isabel has a chance to alter her destiny and prove what ugly stepsisters have always known. It takes more than heartache to break a girl. Is there hope for bullies? Can a mean girl change? It's time for Isabel to reclaim her own fate and she's leaving nothing to chance. I just heard very good things about this. I think I also got it on sale, which is why I was like, I'm just gonna jump on it. And then I don't think I need to say much about this one, but I also got, this is my only YA sci-fi that I bought, but The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes 
Cakes by Susan Collins and this is it takes place before the Hunger Games trilogy and it's basically about snow uh President Snow not like literal snow if you don't know the Hunger Games but also I'm assuming more or less that most people know about the Hunger Games so at least I think it's about President Snow at some point in his life. I don't really want to know too much. I loved The Hunger Games. I think I'm gonna reread it and then read this after and it'll hopefully be a good time. But those are my gifts and also my young adult books. I am still in shock over these. Okay, but I'm gonna have to take them down. I don't know, we still got like a lot of books to go through so I don't know if that transition was okay but I'm hoping that it was. Next up we have some new adult books though or like new adult. I don't actually know if this is new adult. I just don't dare put it under young adult if it happens to be, but Kingdom of the Feared by Cara Maniscalco, which is the third book in the Kingdom of the Wicked trilogy. So in those books, we follow Emilia, I think her name is, who is a witch. She also has a twin who one day ends up, like she comes across her body, she's dead, and Emilia is heartbroken. Her only goal now is to figure out what has happened to her sister. And so in an attempt to get some help with that, she ends up summoning one of the seven princes of hell, more specifically Wrath, and actually ends up making some kind of, or like fooling him into a deal with her so that he has to help her figure out what happened to her sister. And there's a whole mystery there and the two are not very good at working together, so that's a, that's a thing. I really like the first one, second one not as much as the first one, so I'm hoping really hoping but also no idea <laughs> and then i got another one which i've been wanting for a long time i feel it's poison study by maria v snyder which is about a girl who ends up being imprisoned for murder oh wow traumatic okay anyway and so as a result of this she has to basically be the commander of this world that she lives in she has to be his food taster and so she actually risks getting poisoned on a daily basis. In this world magic is also forbidden and the story is about her. I think there is also romance in there but I don't know where it comes from or anything. I've just heard many good things about it. Definitely want to read that in 2023, the whole series, if I like the first one at least. So, but those are my only new adult books. So moving on to adult fantasy. We have one that I could have put under horror as well, but it's The Book Eaters by Sun Ye Dean. In this book, we follow a mother who is a part of a group that are book eaters. So they eat books for sustenance. They eat the stories and the legends of books. However, her second born son, or kid, her second born anyway, was born with an affliction that is called, or so he's, he's ended up being a mind eater instead of book eater, which means that he eats brains as far as I've understood. And so in a desperate attempt to save her son from being busted as a mind eater, she runs off and also wants to find a cure for her son. That's as much as I've understood at least, but I think this is also slightly confusing. Not really sure, but anyway. Also, this is the Illumicrate version. So if you want to check out my adult special editions, I made a video on them. I'll link it up in one of the corners. I can't remember which one, but I basically go through more or less all the adult special editions that I have. Just not my Bridgerton set because I didn't want to take it down. <laughs> but all my other ones. That actually includes the next book, which is The Atlas Paradox by Olivia Blake. This is the sequel to The Atlas Six, in which we follow a group of six people that are what they in that version of our world call Medeans. So they are basically like not witches but sorcerers that can do magic. They all have unique powers aside from two of them and they're supposed to be like the best of the best in the world at the time. So they've been taken to the library of Alexandria by someone called Atlas and while they're at the library their goal is to fortify the wards that are there but also learn more about their powers, get stronger, learn how to work together, which is not going so well, and also they've also been told that only the five best of them actually get to stay. What they've not been told is that the sixth person has to die. And so what happens when they find out that that's the thing? I didn't fully love the first one, I'll not lie, but I thought the ending was so good. So I'm really excited to get into the Atlas Paradox at some point. Hoping there'll be a little bit less 
science stuff in that one, but we'll see. This one I'm actually reading right now, it's Spells for Forgetting by Adrian Young, which is why there's a bookmark in it up here. In this book, we follow two people. So one is a woman who has been living on an island, which is magical in some way. It's very mysterious. But well, she's been living there for basically her entire life, despite actually really wanting to move off of the island. 14 years ago, her boyfriend killed her best friend friend and he ran off after that but in the now he's actually returning to the island and all kinds of mysterious things are going on because of this arrival of this guy and that's as much as i've gathered about the story so far 24 pages in i can tell you that it has mystery vibes and also comes across a little bit spooky but not horror just a little bit spooky i think there's also a, a romance in it but We'll see about that one. Then we have, and I've raved about this book, A Dowry of Blood by S.T. Gibson, which is a retelling of Count Dracula and his wives, where we follow his first wife as she's basically kind of writing a letter to Dracula, telling him about their story, so throughout the centuries as they've been together, also as he has introduced new people into their marriage, and also why she did what she did at the end of the book. And that's as much as I can say other than this is like beautiful and terrifying and and very hard hitting, but I would recommend this. Just check up on triggers. Also, mine has red edges. I don't really know why, but it does. I'm not complaining about it. I also got a discovery of witches by Deborah Harkness, which I've talked about before, but now I can't remember what it's about at all. <laughs> Other than we follow a girl, I can't remember if maybe she's a witch, but she's at a library. She comes across a thing and suddenly all different kinds of like monsters are let loose in the library. And there's also something about a love story between her and maybe possibly a vampire. And this manuscript that has the ability to save some people and that's super confusing but that's all I can remember. It doesn't actually say on this edition of it so <laughs> that is the thing. Like I checked but it doesn't actually say. All it says is a world of witches, demons, and vampires or more specifically demons but that makes me think of the vampire diaries. So I'm calling it demons. A manuscript which holds the secrets of their past and the key to their future. Diane and Matthew, the forbidden love at the heart of it. And this is a thick one as well. But it has witches and it's not a classic, but getting close to like a modern classic, I think. So I want to read it. I also got Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry, which I've heard so many good things about. Like people are raving over this book. But in it, we follow an orc who is tired of carrying around her axe all day, tired of being brutal, tired of killing people or other orcs. I'm unsure of that part. She just wants to settle down. So she decides to do so in this slightly dangerous city where she opens a coffee shop. For this, she needs help, of course, which I think is where this one comes in. I'm saying this one because I don't really know what they are, but I guess we'll see. And as far as I know as well, our dear lead orc actually has some dangerous enemies from the past as well, who might be causing some issues for her and her new coffee shop. And that's, um, are those floating? Oh no, they're not. Well, that's cute. Wait, look, I want one of those so like I can hang my mugs up. Genius. Anyway, I'm excited to read this at some point. Oh, this is the Broken Binding edition, by the way. Also talk about that one in the other video that I mentioned. More specifically, the adult special edition video that I mentioned. This next one I actually talked about in a video where I mentioned that I really wanted it but didn't have my- I didn't have it yet. So I found it on sale and got it. And it's Dark Fever by Karen Marie Moaning, which is the first one in a series. I can't remember how many books. But we follow Michaela, whose sister has died. So Michaela takes off to figure out what actually happened to her sister. In the process, learns that she has powers that she didn't know she had. So this power causes her to be able to see past like our realm and into the Fey realm as well. And she doesn't really know how to control it. She doesn't know what to do with it. And there's a whole thing. Also, the killer might be causing some issues for her. I can't remember exactly, but <laughs> dark fever. I also got the obelisk gate in a sale. These are basically all my Black Friday purchases that have turned up finally, so worth going through them today. But this is the sequel to the fifth season. It's by N.K. Jemisin. And I remember talking about the fifth season not really knowing what it's about. I still don't know what it's about. And the synopsis is slightly confusing to me, but I've heard many good things about these books, which is why I felt safe enough to actually buy the sequel without having read the first one. Hopefully we'll do that in the new year. But these are adult sci-fi, as far as I can remember, which means we're going into the remaining sci-fi as well. 
that I have, which is a little bit. So we're starting out with Winter's Orbit by Everina Maxwell. In this one, we follow what is his name? Kiem, Prince Kiem, who is a bit of a disappointing royal at least if the synopsis is right. He's been married off to someone, a royal from another planet more specifically, who is both a widower but also a murder suspect. So of course he doesn't want to go, but it's his duty, he has to. Neither of them really want to get married, but here they are. And so while navigating this unwanted marriage, there's also a lot of political stuff going on and royal intrigue stuff like issues. Royal issues. You know the whole drama, essentially. Drama. And an epic love story as well. I have Ocean's Echo as an arc, so I really wanted to get through Winter's Orbit first. They take place in the same universe. They're, they're not companion novels, so you don't have to read Winter's Orbit first, but I think I would benefit from it, so that's why I got it. I requested the arc without, like, I genuinely thought they wouldn't accept it, so <laughs> I just requested it for fun and then they did accept it. <laughs> Whoops. And then we have a special edition set, which is, I should probably have turned these around. Gideon the Ninth, and also Hera the Ninth, and lastly, Nona the Ninth by Tamsin. If someone could send me a voice message with the pronunciation of their last name, I'd be very thankful because I have no idea. <laughs> Moira, maybe. I love these books. Like, a lot. I love these books a lot. So, in Gideon the Ninth, we follow Gideon, who is Swordswoman. She is a badass with a two-hander. We also follow Harrow. Harrow is the reverend daughter, so she's the daughter of the leaders of this planet that they live on. So they're both from Ninth House, which means that they're from Planet Nine, which is the least favored planet, if you will. Things are not great on planet nine or in the ninth house. One day Harrow gets a message from the Forever King because he's in search of more lictors. Lictors are basically like his, not warriors, protectors. I don't know, they do stuff. Soldiers maybe? Let's call them soldiers. They do stuff for him. But to become a lictor you have to go through some tests and so Harrow, knowing that she needs a swordsman, what's the word? Cavalier. She needs a cavalier to go do these tests, which is basically a protector for her. Asks Gideon if she can do the job for her because the cavalier that was actually trained from birth to be Harrow's cavalier sucks <laughs> and has also run off. So Harrow asks Gideon, gives her a bit of an offer because Gideon just all Gideon wants is to get off of the ninth house. Like, she does not want to be there. She's been trying to run away her whole childhood many, many, many times and has never been successful. So all she wants is to get off of ninth house. She does not want to be there. Harold says, if you come with me, be my cavalier for these tests, I will give you permission to leave. And so the two take off and things are weird at this place they end up at where they got to do the tests and stuff. Overall, just kind of weird books, but they're really good. So I show these off in the other special edition video as well if you want to see them a little bit better, but we're not going to do that today because this is gonna be a long video. <laughs> I also got Veronica Roth's Poster Girl, which I'll admit is synopsis wise a little bit confusing, but think dystopian, think a regime that has fallen, and there's a woman who used to be the poster girl for this regime. She's been in prison for 10 years and she is given the opportunity to get out of prison if she helps finding a girl. And in the process, she starts to learn a lot of things about the old regime and also about her family. That's as much as I can say because I'm a little bit confused, but I've heard good things about this, so I'm excited to read it. I don't buy books that I haven't heard good things about, so I should probably stop saying that to be honest. <laughs> but yes, this will actually be my first Veronica Roth book because I have not read. I forgot what it's called right now. Divergent? I've not read that. So I'm excited though. I found this at the bottom, but I think I think I should have included it in the fantasy part, but <laughs> I must have put it in the wrong place in my stacks of books. So Soulless by Gail Carriger. This I also got in a sale and I've heard good things about it. It seems very unique in some kind of way. We follow a girl who is soulless. Being soulless means that she is not affected. As far as I've understood, she's not affected by supernatural powers. She's also been attacked by a vampire who she ends up killing. And I don't think she's supposed to, like, I don't think she's allowed to kill vampires in this world. It takes place in London, by the way, but like another version of London. So Queen Victoria actually sends a werewolf out to sort out what happened with this murder. Are the girls not too happy about that? Vampires are kind of appearing and disappearing. Things are a little bit weird. Everyone thinks it's her fault. And that's as much as I've understood. A novel of vampires, werewolves, and parasols. Yeah, it sounds very, very unique. 
so I'm excited to read this at some point. I think it was very popular like sometime last year and because I don't particularly love the cover, I just kind of like, nah. But now I'm okay with it. So those are my adult fantasy and also sci-fi books for this round. We're moving on to mystery and horror. So let's see if I can do this better this time. Oh, my hair. I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, or I'll see in editing. So we've gone through two stacks of books. We got one stack left. A lot of contemporaries. We'll get to it first though. Horror and mystery books. And we are starting out with, I actually think I've talked about this on the channel, but If We Were Villains by Emil Rio. And this, even with the synopsis, seems very like, what's going on kind of? So we follow a young man his name is Oliver and he's been in prison for 10 years for killing one of his fellow students. On the day that he's released, the detective that was on this case approaches him because he really wants, he's getting retired, so he really wants to just know what happened. And so I think we go back in time and we're told the story of these seven students that have been a part of a play. There is rivalry, there is rivalry gone bad, and their acting skills are essentially put to a test. People are raving over this. I should have read it here in November. Or October. I never got to it. But that's also because this was late. So I just, I didn't have a copy of it. <laughs> this next one is a horror. It's House of Hunger by Alexis Henderson, which is a vampire book. So we follow a girl who is struggling a lot money-wise. And so she ends up applying to become a bloodsmaid at this place. Bloodsmaid sounds super... I would not want to be one is all I'm trying to say. The woman who owns this house that our lead girl has ended up at is very captivating and just has a certain kind of aura. So our lead girl is trying to find her place at this new place, getting into the role as a bloodsmaid as well. But then one day her fellow bloodsmaids actually start to go missing. And so our lead girl finds herself in a bit of a, what is happening here? Like this is very weird. And so she's gonna have to learn how to behave at this house as a bloodsmaid. Otherwise, it might be her time to go next, if you know what I mean. I also got, this is a fairy loot edition, but it's One Dark Window by Rachel Gillig, which people are raving over too, which is actually really exciting. I'm excited to read this at some point. What I remember about this is that we follow a girl who has a nightmare stuck inside of her, and this nightmare is slowly but surely also taking over her mind. She also lives in a town that is afflicted with something I'm unsure of. And one day a guy comes to town. So the two of them actually somehow end up wanting to cure the town of this affliction that it's under. And there's an attraction there too. <laughs> but that's what I got from this. I think the vibes in this one will be super, super interesting. And so I'm excited to see exactly what it's about. We have two more mystery books. Well, this one is kind of a mystery romantic comedy as well, which is Finlay Donovan knocks him dead. The sequel to Finlay Donovan is Killing It, which I thought was so good. I'm so excited to read this. But in the first one, we follow single mom Finlay Donovan, who is just not having an easy time. She's also a writer of mystery novels, more specifically murder mysteries. So one day, while she's just, she's just having an off day, she ends up going to a meeting with her agent where she is describing the plot of her last mystery book. And so more specifically, she is describing the murder that happened in the book. A lady at the neighboring table overhears this and somehow jumps to the conclusion that she's actually a hit woman. And so before Finlay knows it, she has been hired to kill this woman's husband. Finlay Donovan doesn't really want to do it, but at the same time, it's a lot of money to turn down. And so, yeah, no. First one ends a bit on a cliffhanger, so I was like, I bought the sequel straight away. I'm not gonna lie. I'm gonna be fully honest with you. I did it. I'm not embarrassed. <laughs> it was a pre-order though because it's a paperback. It's a small paperback so I had to wait for it a little bit, but. Last book is The Box in the Woods by Maureen Johnson, which is the fourth book in the Truly Devious series, which is not just a trilogy anymore. I've actually also pre-ordered the fifth one, despite only having read the first one. But in the first one, kind of pointless to talk about that one because this is not about that at all. In the first one though, we follow a girl who ends up at an academy for special children. So all the children or young people that are at this academy have some kind of unique talent. There is a guy who is really good at making YouTube videos. There's a guy who's really good at writing stories. There's a girl who is very good at building robots. 
to know that sort of thing. And our girl, our lead girl, is just really good at solving mysteries. She's very into true crime. So when she gets there, obviously she wants to know the mystery of Ellingham Academy because back in the day, the founder of the Academy, his wife and daughter, either were dead, murdered, or they went missing. He himself also ended up dead in a mysterious kind of way. And so our lead girl sets herself upon this like, she sets herself on a mission. She wants to figure out what happened really. But that's the first trilogy. I don't really know what this is about. So <laughs> I'm not gonna read the synopsis though because I've learned not to read synopses in sequels before reading the books before it. So I'm just not going to. But those are my horror and mystery books, although mostly mystery. These are horror. Mystery, mystery, and mystery. I'm gonna leave them up here though because I only have one historical fiction book and that is Half a Soul by Olivia Atwater, which I could also have put under fantasy because it is like a historical fantasy and then romance. I've heard that this is very unique, so I'm very excited. We're gonna be reading it with the book club in January actually. It's the primary pick, so very, very excited for that. But in this book, we follow Theodora who has been cursed. So what is it? She can't, she has no sense of fear or embarrassment. Which obviously, since this is historical fiction, I feel like especially back then, you were very much like you had to be proper all the time. So it doesn't really sound like a, like a good curse to have cast upon yourself. And so when this is found out as well, all different kinds of situations are kind of, like she's thrown into all different kinds of situations. She also ends up basically crushing on like the least likable man in this whole society. There's a whole situation there. Fairy affairs as well. I mean, it sounds like a good time. It sounds like fun and charming and very unique. I'm excited to be reading this with, with the book club. But I'm gonna make room for the contemporary books now. So we do have some to go through. Like, I'm not gonna lie. I went a little bit almost all in just buying a lot of contemporary. So um, these three I have mentioned before because they are on my TBR for the month. But we have In a Holidays by Christina Lauren, which as far as I can remember is about a woman who goes back to this place that she used to celebrate Christmas at. It's her favorite place, but it's the last time she's supposed to go back there because they're, they're gonna stop having Christmas there. And she just doesn't want this to happen. Somehow she ends up in a timeless Loop. And that's as much as I can say about this. I'll be reading it like Saturday. I'm very excited. <laughs> I also have Window Shopping by Tessa Bailey, which... Oh, this is by Christina Lauren, by the way. But Window Shopping by Tessa Bailey, which is about a woman who is looking at this window display, Christmas display. A very charming man comes up to her and asks what she's thinking. Like, what does she think of the window display? And she's like, I don't like it. It's boring. So they get to talking a little bit. She asks him, what do you do? And he's like, well, I'm the owner of the store. And so she actually ends up being hired by him to fix his windows. And there's a lot of attraction there as well. Very short book. It's Tessa Bailey. I'm expecting a lot of smut. <laughs> Just gonna set that straight. Like, <laughs> that's what I'm expecting. Smut and fun vibes as well. And then lastly, from my Christmas books, I have One Day in December by Josie Silver, which is about a guy and a girl. So a girl is a woman, is on a bus driving by this, uh, on the street, whatever, on the road. As she looks out and makes eye contact with a guy standing on the street. And there's just like an instant connection. So she has been thinking about him for a while until one day she's going to a party, her best friend's party actually, and her best friend introduces her to her boyfriend who just happens to be this guy. And so after that we follow the three of them, or mostly the two of them I think, for like 10 years through different situations, life changes and stuff, and that is one day in December. So a little bit more heartfelt, I think. I got King of Wrath by Anna Huang today or yesterday. I'm unsure if this is a mafia romance, but I guess we'll see once I start reading it. I think it might be actually. But we follow two people, a man and a woman. So the man is... Oh, mine has taken damage. I've just noticed. That is so rude. Anyway, the man is a CEO of a company. He's very much an eternal bachelor. So he's decided that he does not want to get married, but ends up in some trouble with a new enemy that is apparently quite threatening. And so ends up having to marry this enemy's 
daughter. I'm not exactly sure what her role is other than the arranged marriage, but she's also a, a jewelry heiress and like the pride and joy of this family as well. As far as I can gather at least. But other than that, like I don't really know much about it. I'm so bothered that it has lines on the cover. I'm not gonna lie. It's fine. I won't notice. Whatever. But I pre-ordered this mainly because I know people love the Twisted series, but we'll see if it's any good. I also got Flock which is the first one in the Ravenhood trilogy, I think it is. It's by Kate Stewart. So this, I've actually read two completely different synopses on this book, which has me confused a little bit, I'm not gonna lie. But at least I know we follow a 19 year old girl who has moved to a small town after making a deal with her father. So he will pay her tuition to college and also send her single mother a lot of money if she spends a year here in this town. She's not super crazy about it, but she'll do what it takes. And while there, she's also introduced to a couple, a group of friends, and she starts to like two of the boys in this group. And I remember that this starts out in a fun way because I have read the first like page. It definitely has a bit of a not happy vibe to it, if you get what I mean. <laughs> okay, not a rom-com. I actually, I accidentally counted it under the rom-coms, but at least I don't think so. Might have some funny vibes to it, but not a full-on rom-com. And it's More Than Words by Mia Sheridan. So in this book, we follow two people that have been a thing, at least, in the past. They kissed, he took off, and she's like, well, that's rude. <laughs> Maybe a little bit more dramatic than that, but anyway. They were very close in the past when this happened, so she's been very broken by him just running off. Anyway, years later, he's slightly famous as a composer. Everybody knows who he is, but he's having a hard time actually composing music until he runs into her again. And so there's a bit of a difficult situation there because she doesn't really trust him anymore. There are too many secrets, too many lies from the past. And I think the book is basically about them trying to find a way back to each other. I think I'm right about that, but loved Archer's voice. I'm very excited to read more than words at some point. And now the last four. I'm unsure if this is like a full-on rom-com, but the cover at least gives me rom-com vibes. Honestly, don't want to read the synopsis, which I know is stupid for a book haul video, but I want to be surprised with this one. So it's Part of Your World by Abby Jimenez. Mine has been... that's annoying. Anyway, <laughs> all I know about this is that it's been very well received. People love it. I don't want to know more than that. That is, that's literally all. <laughs> Anyway, so we got this one, but if you liked it, let me know if you read it. So this one is I'm pretty sure it's a rom-com. It's The Shoe Fits by Julie Murphy. We follow a woman who has a big shoe collection. She's having like she's really she really loves fashion but she's having a hard time finding clothes because fashion industry is very anti plus size people as we know. I'm not plus size and I have issues fitting into their clothes. It's a thing. So I can only imagine that it's harder if you are a larger size than I am but she has a big shoe collection because she can always find shoes in her size. And so because of the shoe collection she ends up on a dating show and so she is thrust into the spotlight becomes a bit of a body positivity icon as well and also it's like a dating program this reality show there's a bachelor i don't know if it's like the bachelor the bachelor actually so there's one guy and then a lot of girls i don't know but she's finding herself hoping to actually be able to be with this guy as well. Like she feels like she actually has a chance, you know? So it's about them going on lavish dates, getting to know each other, and seeing where it goes. I also got another Christina Lauren book actually, Roomies. And in this book we follow two people. So our lead girl has her eyes on this guy, this Irish musician who plays in the subways. I think that's where he plays, right? Did I remember it right? Yes, he plays his guitar in the subway. She's very taken with him, but then one day he disappears. She finds out that the reason he disappeared is actually because his visa has run out and he really wants to get into Broadway. So to solve this problem, she offers to marry him so that he can stay. <laughs> And they also have to live together as well because of this. And what happens when the two of them live so close to each other? Oh, I don't know. What's gonna happen? Who knows? I feel like we know, but... And lastly, among my contemporary books, I have a Not So Meet Cute by Megan Quinn, which is about a girl who wants to marry rich <laughs> and a guy who is having issues with a business deal. And so he proposes to her that they fake date so that he can get 
get this business deal sorted out. And so she starts living with him as well. Kind of like forced proximity again. It's one of my favorite tropes. Like, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> so, enemies to lovers, fake dating, forced proximity, like the whole, yes. So, um, very excited to read this as well. It'll be my first Megan Quinn book, actually, unless I read one on KU before I get to this one, which honestly would not surprise me, but we'll see. And so those were my contemporaries. Honestly, I need more rom-coms. If you have any recommendations, help a girl out. And then the last book that we're talking about is my graphic novel, Monstras, which I have mentioned in my reading wrap-up because, yes, I already read it. I'm gonna read the bag again just because it sums it up so much better than I can, <laughs> but I really like this. Set in an alternate world of art deco beauty and steampunk horror, Monstrous tells the epic story of Micah Halfwolf, a teenage survivor of a cataclysmic war between humans and Arcanics. In the face of oppression and terrible danger, Micah is both hunter and hunted, searching for answers about her mysterious past, as those who seek to use her remain just one step behind. And all the while, the monster within her begins to awaken. So think like centuries-long feud, war, gods, godlike powers, love the art style, very brutal as well, but, and a badass female lead, and I'm, yes, loving it. But that cannot, can it stand on its own? Cool. Okay, but that was uh, my very long book haul for, for this time. So it's the last book haul of 2022. We'll probably do another one in January or early February. We'll see about that one. Hope you enjoyed it though. Again, I will try at least to include links to all of the books in the description box if you want to check out the synopses or other. I will try, but it's a lot of books, so I don't know if I can fit it all into the description box. Hope you enjoyed this video though. If you've read any of the books that I mentioned today, let me know your opinions on them. I would love to hear you out. I just saw the Akotar books again and also Lore Olympus, so thank you again so, so much, Stella, for sending those to me. Very shocking. I'm very grateful. Thank you. But yeah, that's that's all I got for you guys today. So hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to hit the thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos like this, but also reading wrap ups and TBR videos, readathons, and all the other booktube stuff, definitely consider hitting the subscribe button. But that is all I got for you guys today. So I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye bye. Oh, you know.